Welcome back to the farm, everybody. I got one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five baby chicks right there. Freshly hatched. Just following their mama. What do you think of that? We'll have to put these guys up. Actually, no, there's six of them. I see, I see a sixth one there. Uh, we'll have to put these guys up a little bit later. Because uh, if we don't, well predators around here or something we'll get them but kind of finny it's like what goes on uh with the farm life and death life and death because we are butchering meat birds today Okay, so you guys got a chance to see the new chicks. Now, here are the ones that we're getting ready to process. Uh, these are Cornish crosses. We've been raising them just for this. Uh, this is just part of life on the farm. You know, you'll have uh, life and uh, you'll have death. It's just part of farming. And uh, this is one of the sadder parts of it. This is uh, uh, when we process these guys. So, but again, it's just part of it. So I'm not going to show you the processing, but I am going to show you our uh, setup. So this is the hanging tree, so to speak. That's actually kind of what I call it. Uh, just an old uh, uh, swing frame that we got that we use to, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, hang the chickens upside down on it. And I might show a couple hanging here in just a few minutes when, we get, when I get ready to get started. Uh, but uh, the reason we do that is because when a chicken is upside down, he kind of passes out, kind of makes him more relaxed, makes it easier on us. And then what I do is just uh, cut the juggler on the neck and just let him bleed out. And it's just, it's just easier all around for everybody. And honestly, I think it's a little more humane. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a nifty idea. I found that off of another YouTube channel the idea of somebody else was hanging them upside down. And I thought, that's definitely a lot easier than a butchering block. Okay, so I did actually buy a folding table for this project, but Steph Tun commandeered it for her greenhouse use. So I'm not going to use it. Uh, so what I end up having to do is take this uh, piece of OSB, uh, scrap piece of OSB that I have. I just I put it across my trailer here. It's gets it just about the right amount of height. I got some of this uh, drawer. Um, uh, I forget what it's called, but the liner. So these liners you put in your drawers, it helps keep stuff clean. Got a roll of that dollar store, fairly cheap. I wish I'd have bought two rolls because it really wasn't quite enough for this. So end up taking a piece of a pizza box here to uh, kind of help me use for as a way to keep the chickens clean as uh, we process them. So, and of course, got to have our old paper towels. Or strand we'll use to tie the chickens up with. Um, got some new cutlery just for this project. Um, actually, there were three, three of these knives. Uh, one of them I'm using in the kitchen, the butchery knives in the kitchen. But uh, got a paring knife and a chef's knife. Um, plus, I bought a, um, a meat cleaver. Uh, I'll use the meat cleaver to chop off the feet. Um, and also, I'll be using a pocket knife just to skin them out. Yeah, I'm going to be skinning them out instead of plucking them. I thought about plucking them, but uh, honestly, I don't know if I really want to go through the work, work of uh, just plucking them. Uh, excuse me, the work of plucking them, because it, honestly, it's a lot of work, and I really just don't have the setup for it. Uh, maybe the next go around I might do that, but uh, I think right now I'm just going to skin them out because it, it is just, it's a lot easier. And don't forget our cooler of ice, which I'll take it, uh, ice out of the bag here in just a few minutes. Bucket to put the innards in and bucket of just clean water I'm going to use to dunk the birds after I uh, clean them out before I put them in the cooler. 
and uh, uh, and that's just ordinary just clean tap water I got. We're still getting another bath when they get into the kitchen into the sink. Uh, just right before they go into the uh, vacuum seal bags. So that's that's our process. So I showed how I uh, killed my birds on here before without actually doing it. I just pretty much showed this process them hanging. And what I do is I'll just wrap the string around their feet. And you got to wrap it around each individual foot because if not, they will get off. So but what you do, you just let them hang upside down like that. Then you spin them around and you just cut your jugular and you just let them bleed out. And like I said, it's a whole lot less stressful on everybody than just sitting there put them across a butcher and block or whatever. <laughs> Whoop, one just got off. <laughs> I'll get her in a few minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these down and uh, uh, i say the next thing you guys will see will probably be uh, uh, after we got them in the vacuum seal bags. Now that literally took me about two minutes. That's what they look like after they get skinned. I still gotta clean out the inside. And uh, that's really not a bad job. So we'll clean out the clean out the inside. I'll duck them in the clean water and squirt them around and put them in the cooler till uh, do till Steph gets a chance to uh, clean them up in the kitchen and put them in the vacuum seal bags. Not a bad job. Uh, so I take a little break from the chickens and got a little bite to eat and stuff and i think we'll let steph talk a little bit about her uh, greenhouse and her plants what's going on here steph okay this is my tomatoes i've grown i got um mary mariana tomatoes they're like roma tomatoes and um cherokee purple cherokee tomatoes and i think that's kale there Got, what we got over here? This is Swiss chard. What's now? What's chard? It's a leafy green you can eat. So like for salads and stuff. Yeah. I got mustard, mustard greens, um, kale, squash plant. Is that strawberry, strawberry over there? Yeah, strawberries. I <laughs> grew some clover just to put in the garden walk area. <laughs> nice. I think this is kale. I can't remember and I don't have... Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's kale. It don't, I don't even have a name on it. So you don't have anything inside right now? Uh, I have... A watermelon and a pumpkin. Oh, looks like my pumpkin needs put in some water. Yeah. Oh, and I got pepper plants still in here that's not big enough yet. Okay. I'm gonna move this to the. Now my, tell everybody. This is my pumpkin. Tell everybody about your pool. I setup. use the pool so I can move the stuff around and water it, and not have to lift on stuff a lot. Maybe he's the water. Saves having to carry a water bucket every day, don't Yeah. And it's better to water them from the bottom. Well, thanks, Steph. Mm -hmm. So we got Mama in a cage now, so she can protect her babies a little bit better. We got too many predators around here to just let them run loose like that. Last time we had some really nice chicks born. They all ended up disappearing. We don't want that to happen this time. Billy Mama. Nah. Well, my wife stopped me and she says, you want to make sure she showed you guys all her roses. So, let's talk about them, Steph. Well, they're knockout roses. Did they knock anybody out? Yeah, me. <laughs> A lot of work? Um, no. They, the red ones aren't totally out yet, but they're starting to come out. My poppy was beautiful, and it's quit blooming. Not poppy penny. I called it the wrong thing. That's okay. What are these things? I have no idea. Oh, okay. There's some purple somethings. 
really pretty stuff. What kind of bush is this? Uh, lilacs. Lilacs. Right. I have to do this a lot. <laughs> My blueberries, look at all the berries on them. Oh, yeah. Because the deer and the birds don't get to them first. And there's a lot on this one too. Anybody got any suggestions to keep the deer and the birds away from the blueberries? <laughs> Drop them in the comments. And that, my friends, is the finished product. I think we did pretty good. Okay, guys, thank you for watching today. Uh, just one more thing before we leave. On June 25th, we will be celebrating one year on this channel. So to commemorate our one year anniversary here, uh, I would like to do another YouTube live, sort of like what I've done before. Um, which I know the last one didn't go over us so well, but, uh, you know, still want to do another one. Um, but uh, uh, what I want from you guys is because a lot of people don't get to watch the lives live. So what I want you all to do is to type in the comments down below uh, questions that would be good for me to answer during the live. Uh, and what I want you all to do is just type in, in the comments, put... Uh, questions or put question for live colon and then type out the question like say um, uh, what's the name of your cats and so uh, what you do is you put in question for live colon what's the name of your cats and then that's the questions that uh, that give me an idea for questions to ask uh, during the live so uh, anyway and uh i think that's all i have for y'all today so uh again thanks for watching please hit the likes share and subscribe buttons and we'll catch you on the next one bye bye